This week, multiple NGOs, including Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, have called on the UN Human Rights Council to launch an international fact-finding mission in the western Xinjiang province of China, where the state is imprisoning over one million Turkic Muslims. China has branded the camps centers for vocational training and places to weed out extremism. But former detainees have reported being forced to sing the anthems of the Chinese Communist Party and disavow Islam and their beliefs. Those who've complained about the indoctrination are tortured through waterboarding, starvation and electric shocks. Those who avoid alcohol, don't smoke, wear hijab and greet each other by saying Aslam Alaikum, meaning peace be upon you, are categorised as extremist. At present, China is targeting Uyghur Muslims who travel and have contact outside of China citing a crackdown on terrorism. But many of the victims have gone missing and are believed to have died in these internment camps. It's important to remember that this isn't about extremism. It's about population control and a paranoid state resorting to ethnic cleansing to quash dissent and consolidate power. Uyghurs have long held economic grievances with the state for distributing jobs in the region to majority ethnically Han Chinese and see Xinjiang as an occupied resource-rich area, much like Tibet. So why isn't the international community doing anything? Well, whilst Ofcom, the UK's broadcasting watchdog, allows China to open its state broadcasting offices in London, China is buying the silence of multiple nation states through the Belt and Road Initiative, the world's largest infrastructure project that'll span across three continents and leave dozens of countries in debt to China for the investment. Take Pakistan, China's closest ally in the Muslim world. Following a $46 billion pledge from the Chinese, Prime Minister Imran Khan said he didn't know anything about the Uyghur situation. As usual, the prospect of foreign capital trumps human rights.